Jesus is Lord. And he was such a nice Jewish boy. <laughs> Jesus changed my life. And he's still in the life-changing business. As Paul said, the love of Christ compels me. You know, Randy, I think most people don't realize how much darkness there is it, in it the world. It can't be just coming to church and getting pumped up with a faith. You and I are all going to have to have something of faith in us. Father. Jesus died to save sinners, and you are a sinner. The following program is filmed live at Grace Community Church in Fort Worth, Texas as part of their monthly Crosstalk service. Remember, I've been asking a question of everyone. Do you ever really think about the end of the world? My comments are intended to be challenging, but as I told you in my opening songs, I'm blessed. I believe in a great future. I bring straight talk about the potential for economic collapse and a coming judgment. But I also have words of instruction and of great encouragement. Listen to the counsel of Paul. Make it your goal to live a quiet life, minding your own business and working with your hands, just as we instructed you before. Then people who are not believers will respect the way you live, and you will not need to depend on others. And now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. We tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living when the Lord returns will not Meet him ahead of those who have died, for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. First, the believers who have died will rise from their graves. Then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. So encourage each other with these words. I want you to be encouraged, dear friend. I hope you are all saved and born again. But if you've been saved a long time and the greatest miracle of your life happened decades ago, where have you been since you met the Lord? God is not dead. Miracles are not dead. Your testimony should be vibrant and ongoing because we are living in the last days and Jesus is coming back. Like the old man at the little church, I must say, it's a miracle to be born again. But it is deficient to stay a baby. Sometimes I think some churches have some attendees who have a retarded level of growth. Please don't settle for such a low bar of faith. God wants us all to grow. He wants us all to become mature believers. He wants us all to announce God's love and the coming of our Messiah. It's okay to be a vegetarian. But don't be a spirit-filled vegetable. God is enough couch potatoes. Now, thanks to the coronavirus, folks can work from their couch, order meals from their couch, go to church from their couch, never have to interact with a human being in person until they're good and ready. But we need to get off our couch to tell people that Jesus changed our lives. He's still in the life-changing business, and he's coming back. Do you love Jesus enough to tell people that Jesus is the answer? Are you involved in evangelism at all? Do you go on mission trips? Do you pray for missionaries? Do you generously support missions outreaches? This blog is an exhortation. It's a warning. There's trouble ahead. Treacherous times are... It's coming. It's unavoidable. Pay attention. The chaos infecting the world will lead frightened, confused people to a deep hunger for God. People need answers. Will you be ready to point them to Jesus? Get off the couch. Get off your pew. Get off your soapbox. Get off your phones. But be ready to talk to people. Yes, wear a mask if you feel unsafe. Stay at home if you're unhealthy. But don't hide behind a mask to avoid your call to evangelize. It's too late for that. Learn the art of listening to the heart of people. Hear them so you can speak to them. Remember the social skill of looking people in the eye and talking about things that matter. Our society has forgotten how to talk to people using complete sentences. 
life-changing ideas can exceed 120 characters. Some people can't communicate without emojis. Real words, real truths, real emotion, real experiences must be shared with real, hurting people. Be prepared to invite God into their situation. Ask them if you can pray together about the things that concern them. You'd be surprised how ready people are to just let you pray with them. Prepare yourselves for the things to come. Expect a great harvest of souls born in these fields of struggle. Believers who are ready will be mightily used by God to win the lost. The people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Do you know him? Are you interested in doing exploits for him? Baby cakes win. You go with God, he goes with you, and where he goes, stuff happens. Prepare your hearts. If there's sin in your life, you must turn from that which displeases God so you can make your heart ready to be gloriously led by him into your calling. Find your calling. Walk in your calling. Don't be left out of the harvest. Don't disqualify yourself through a wrong connection to this fallen world. Our call is to be separate. God told Moses he wanted the children of Israel to be different. Some of us are very different. That's not always bad. He told them, I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore sanctify yourselves. You shall be holy, for I am holy. We must be a set-apart people. Mr. Businessman, is Jesus your Lord? Is he directing your steps or does he merely provide an introduction to clients that do business with Christians? Mother, is Jesus your Lord nourishing your family or is he a life jacket you keep in the closet for those sinking moments when your plan is failing? Young person, is Jesus your Lord or are you just in church to keep your parents off your back? Give your life to Jesus, do it today. God will make you into a spiritual giant among the immoral dwarfs that populate your generation. Crosstalk International and the Today with God Project have been at work here in Cuba now for nearly 10 years. In that time, we've seen over 30,000 people be presented with the message of Christ through Who is Jesus Project. And over 5,000 people have given their lives to the Lord for the very first time. Nearly 50 different churches have been planted specifically because of what God is doing through this project. With that influx, we need to support the pastors and their families. We need to help bring in more leadership. And that's where you come in. We have taken on the support of 61 pastors across the island of Cuba. And we'd like to ask your help. For just $50 a month, we can continue to support these pastors for every gift that is committed, we've got a matching grant, a donor who's committed to double what you give. So your $50 becomes $100, and we can then support two pastors. Give us a call at 1-800-688-3422, or visit us online at crosstalk.org. My friends, we are the church. We are his voice to tell the lost. We're his hands to help the downtrodden. We're his heart to comfort the wounded. Jesus is coming soon. The goal should be to tell everyone and leave no one untouched by his love. Do you ever really think about the end of the world? Separate yourselves from that which contaminates. Instead of a mask, some need blinders. The world is drugged on lustful entertainment, sensual overload, and freedoms abused by licentious lifestyles that entice the religious and engulf the immoral. We must seek purity and holiness. In other words, if we name the name of Christ, we must reflect the desires of Christ. To accept less within ourselves is intellectually dishonest and spiritually sterile. R. A. Torrey wrote, we must be merciless in dealing with our own sins. He understood the psalmist who said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. 
Friends, if you're not propelling the gospel to the ends of the earth, what is standing in your way? Whatever it is, don't make your excuse to me. Tell it to Jesus. He made his will perfectly clear. Will you obey or make excuses? Jesus said that before the end, the gospel must first be published among the nations. But many Christians are guilty of hiding their lamps under a bushel right here at home. The world needs the light of Christ to shine through you. Let it shine. If you can't go to the mission field, use your treasure to send others. If you prefer to invest everything in the crumbling kingdom of Wall Street, you might miss the blessed return on investment that you could gain in the kingdom of God. But if your heart's great desire was pegged to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, I have a hot stock tip for you. Prepare for a major crash in the financial markets. Here's what you need to know if you want to formulate your investment strategies according to Bible prophecy. The financial world will crumble in about one hour. Are you ready? I'm serious. The collapse of the world's money markets will wrap up in an hour, so don't put too much stock in the stock market or place too much trust in financial trusts. For in one hour is thy judgment come. It will cause horrifying results for businessmen around the world. This will make the 1929 stock market crash look like a tumble in the hay. And the 2020 pandemic will look comparatively like smooth sailing. The merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. Can you imagine the end of your financial future in one hour? I don't know which hour God will choose, but that's how long you'll have to buy, sell, turn your long-term investments into short-term cash, but you will lose everything if you don't act fast. How quick can you contact your broker? How fast can you reverse your investment strategy? The phones will be busy during that one-hour window, and if you're lucky enough to get through, you're going to learn that nobody wants that which you cherished. When no one is buying, who will be selling? Sam Walton's ghost couldn't sell an umbrella and a typhoon at Walmart when everyone stops buying because when the clock strikes done and that hour begins, it will crush the expectations of every seller, every buyer, and every liar who promised a bright future in a diversified mutual fund consisting of a pyramid of investments prudently divided between mammon, moths, and rust. When the panic hits, you won't have time to shift your investments from government securities to eternal security and widow's mites. The revelation spells it out very clearly. For in one hour so great riches is come to naught. Your great riches will evaporate. Where are your treasures? Do you ever really think about the end of the world? When the clock strikes done, and that one special hour marks the end of trading on Wall Street, what will remain in your portfolio? It will clarify the meaning of the thought Jesus shared about the first being made last and the last being made first. You see, the richest moguls who charted the course of enormous enterprises will be stripped of power in that one hour. One version says, your merchants were the world's important people. The ones you hear about on the news. The ones you follow. But after that hour, they won't be able to be identified from dental records because no one will care about their wisdom. So remember that you heard it right here. You've been warned. This hour could start like the beginning of any other hour. Traders trading, buyers buying, sellers selling. There will even be preachers preaching, warning sinners who will keep sinning until the change comes that will reveal the true worth of everything in the marketplace. This warning has been printed as a public notice that has gone unheeded for almost 2,000 years. It's clearly written in the last book of the Bible, and it serves as your notice that in one hour, all trading will cease because none of the buyers will find long-term value in the short-term the short-term stuff of the sellers. That's how markets work. There's got to be value, or there's no buying. And there won't be any value left in the things that we've placed so much stock in. It's kind of like the world system is a fake. We're all convinced it's the real deal. It's like a scene in The Wizard of Oz 
in that one hour, Toto's going to pull back the curtain and reveal a weak wizard unable to keep up the charade that captured the imaginations of the damned. The allure of wealth and power will come to an end. It will be revealed that the magic is tragic. In that one hour, the magic will end with the announcement, by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. I think the nations are already deceived. I just pray we're not deceived. Do you ever think about the end of the world? Let me ask you, have you been deceived by that magic? Are you ready for that hour? I want to encourage you to pray, read your Bible, consider the lost. Jesus came to John the Revelator in person to make sure that his warning was heard. He said, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly. He was describing the deteriorating level of faith that now typifies most of Western Christianity. Read the prophecy. Do you see your faith revealed in any of the verses in the Revelation? Have you left your first love? The world faces devastation and judgment. Yet some within church circles are so connected to the world that they have been spiritually neutered. They are no threat to hell and no good to heaven. I come to challenge your spiritual manhood or womanhood. Are you virile or sterile? Are you reproducing or dying without spiritual offspring? God is wearied by our selfish prayers. Some within church congregations are becoming so assimilated into the culture that you can't tell the players from the spectators without a program. We are supposed to be watchmen on the wall. We are supposed to sound the alarm. We are supposed to love God and love people in tangible, evident ways. If you are saved, you must live for God. We're chosen to flourish in God's work. Remember, the church, the body of Christ, remains secure in the promise that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. We have nothing to fear. Jesus showed John the end. We're more than conquerors through him who loves us. But as I look around today, I see the unmistakable signs of the end. Now, does that make me a prophet? No, it doesn't make me a prophet, but I can tell you what does. Near the end of the Revelation, it says, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Are you a Christian? Has Jesus changed your life? That makes you a prophet. Because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The question is, are you prophesying? I mean, are you opening your mouth? Let me make it clear to you. I read the book, Judgment is Coming. We could sit around and drink coffee discussing the mark of the beast. Instead, let me generously paraphrase the message of the revelation. Simple. The world's in the toilet. The big flush is coming. It'll be a never-ending swirly, followed by a water slide to hell. Be afraid. Be very, very afraid if you're not living for God. Look around you. Many lives have been battered and bruised. Many believers have been scarred and wounded in the battle. We must draw near to God. What if I told you that for the cost of a couple of cups of coffee, you can present the gospel message to hundreds of people across the island of Cuba? That type of impact is hard to find anywhere in the world. But that's exactly what's possible with the Today with God project. You see, every flash drive that we bring down gets given to a pastor who will then use it across the island in door-to-door -door evangelism, in roadside evangelism, in church ministry, in Sunday school, in seminary. One flash drive. It's incredible what God can do. By skipping a cup of coffee just a couple of times a month, you can provide one flash drive that will get used across the island with hundreds of Cubans where the gospel message is presented. All it takes is $10. Give us a call at 1-800-688-3422 or visit us online at crosstalk.org. We must love one another. We must help and encourage one another. Let's remember that the church is where lives are built and families are strengthened. The church is where soiled lives find purification. 
The church is where lonely lives find companionship and a friend that sticks closer than a brother. The church is where confused lives find clarity and purpose. The church is where the lost can be found. We should bring the lost to church. You see, all of us come to the Lord as sinners. None of us arrives on our merits. The church is where the redeemed gather to bathe in the glory of God's mercy as we share God's love with those who will soon perish without it. Western Christianity has lost its focus. I hope you have not. Some who hear my voice may be growing cold. Some might even be questioning their faith. If you have drifted, I want to call you back to that first love for the Lord. I want every believer to have a passion for the lost. Do you have a burden for souls? God does. We are called to be the people of influence, and we should all be soul winners. We should use our blessings to be a blessing. That is why God wants us to bring our gifts and sacrifices into His presence so that He will use them to accomplish His purposes. Tough question. Will you come to God empty-handed? Or will you come with the bounty He has provided for you to yield back to Him? Do we enjoy the blessings of God? How must we respond? God tells us clearly. No one should appear before the Lord empty-handed. Each of you must bring a gift in proportion to the way the Lord your God has blessed you. Are you prepared for the coming of the Lord? Will you sneak into heaven by the skin of your teeth and the blood of Christ, having all your works burned up in the judgment because they amount to wood, hay, and stubble? Or have you lived for God and sent your treasures ahead of you into glory, that diversified investment portfolio that matters? Have you sent them ahead where you will have crowns stored up that last forever? Paul invested in crowns. Let us be like Paul. He said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. But think about it. What do we do with our crowns? Will we parade around like kings? No. Those of us who have invested in eternity will have crowns that we will be privileged to lay at the feet of Jesus. Let's not come to him empty-handed. The 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power, for you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count. I'm going to be in that group. I'm not human garbage anymore. Jesus changed my life. He redeemed me. He set me free. He called me to be his own. He gave me a purpose. I have a message from the Lord. He loves me. And he loves you. And you have a message from the Lord. You will be among that innumerable host at that glassy sea before the throne where Jesus is sitting. Don't come empty-handed. They were wearing white robes. Oh, I just love this. Look, there was this great multitude no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language. That's the reason Today with God exists as a mission project. So we can take the simple gospel of a loving God and a coming Messiah to people in their own mother tongue. People shouldn't have to hear about our great God through a translator. If our God's too stupid to talk to the people in the same language that their mother talks to the children, what kind of a God is that? He's not. 
He wants to speak to the lost in their mother tongue to tell them, I love you, I sent my son to die for you, and Jesus is coming. Do you ever think about the end of the world? People from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Will you come empty-handed or will you be given crowns that you can joyously lay at his feet? You know what it means when a preacher looks at his watch? Not a thing but I will show you my watch given to me by my handsome grandson as a groomsman's gift when he allowed me the privilege of being the best man at his wedding. Woo! <laughs> I apologize for uh, my blog. I know you'd probably rather just had Something that made you feel good. This message is sort of like a castor oil donut. You know, it's, it was sweet at the beginning. I want to make sure it's sweet at the end. It might have been a little tough to swallow along the way. So, so before I ask uh, Pastor Rory to come and close the service, repair any damage I've done, I don't know if he can fix it. He's pretty good. Uh, I want to uh, make sure that you have a blessing. You deserve a blessing. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying unto Aaron and to his sons, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee, the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. May the Father's name be on you and may you always be known and blessed by the Father. Yivarech Adonai v'yishmarecha I hear Adonai Ponavelecha Vichunecha I saw Adonai Ponavelecha Viosem Lecha Shalom <laughs> <laughs>